Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another One Piece review. So, if you're new here to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army. So, this is chapter 1053 of One Piece. This is the spoiler chapter because it's not out yet officially till Sunday. So, obviously, with the official translation, some things will be changed here and there, but I don't think it's going to be anything major. So, this is the last chapter of One Piece we will get, and then Oda is taking a one month break. So, the entire month of July, there's not going to be any One Piece chapters, I'm thinking, or maybe towards the end of it. So, we got a nice co color cover page with some characters. One of the characters, I think they're from Skype, yeah, so I'm not sure why Oda put that character there, but it's, it's really cool. But what I really want to talk about is like the chapter part by part. So here in the first part, we get this. What is the meaning of this photo? We never approved it. And I thought we told you to remove the D. No, sir, we weren't told about that. This photo was sent in by CP Zero's Gornika Sama. Reprints it. The world cannot be permitted to see this. So one, they don't want, it, uh, they don't want the world to see Luffy's Gear 5 form because he's Joy Boy, and they also want to remove the D because of the D Clan, which uh, basically I'm thinking the D Clan in the voice century were the rulers of the world, and they were just rulers, and what happened was the world government alongside other nobles and stuff overtook the D Clan. They like over... May, I, I think the D Clan were the original nobles of the world. Like that clan was like, yeah, like I was saying, and then the other nobles were probably jealous and they said, you know what, let's change this whole system around. And there was a giant war. That, that's that's what I think. And basically the D-Clan during the voice century, they were just made to be the villains. And that's why all information about the voice century is also sealed because they don't want the truth out there of what truly happened during the voice century. That, that's what I'm thinking. Now Oda is going to head in, into that direction. So that's why they want to remove the D, obviously, because they don't want to give the D-Clan any spotlight. And they also do not want to give... Luffy's fifth gear form, which he basically is Joy Boy smiling, any spotlight because they don't want people to know about Joy Boy. They don't want that picture to inspire people as well. And it's so interesting how a little pirate from East Blue, a little kid from East Blue, Monkey D. Luffy, has come so far in his journey that he is basically became Joy Boy. And the funniest thing uh, I saw on Twitter one time was when they were like, Sunisha literally came to Wano to fanboy over Joy Boy, aka Luffy, and then leave. <laughs> that that was like hilarious. So we got, I think this guy's name is Morgan. Let me let me check real quick. Because this is gonna be a longer. Yeah. Is it Morgan? No, it's not Morgan. What is this bird's name? I forgot. More I think it starts with an M though. So we got the bird that dis, uh, distributes the news and stuff like that, and they're like, deceased distribution immediately? What a mystifying appearance. All right. People, it's up to us to spread this around the globe. So they did not seize the newspaper distribution. This guy does not care. He loves staring up the news and stuff. Uh, one of the funniest things I saw was like, with the new bounties, they're not going to believe it until they see the birds carrying it, like the delivery birds and stuff, and they are carrying it. And they carried and printed it across the globe, so everybody knows about it. So he says, Cypher Pole's transmission from Wano broke off right after they spotted Big Mom ship. The gears of the world won't stop turning. I won't let their pro propaganda slide when the real story is this tr trilling. Trilling. So he does not care the repercussions that he's going to get from the world government. He's like, oh man, this, this story is so good. The truth is so good. Screw the propaganda. Like this is way better and sprints out the truth. So can you imagine just getting the newspaper, two Yonko taken down, Big Mom and Kaido. Like at first you might, you might even be like, oh wait, I don't even believe this. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's cool. It's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me continue. So uh, after that happens, he's like, it's like a live show. I can't get enough. This guy in the one piece world, the owner of this newspaper printing uh, company 
is so happy about the craziness that is happening in the One Piece world. He's like, I'm going to print out all the truth. And then we get this. The bombshell news of the defeat of the Emperor's Big Mom and Kaido spread very rapidly around the world. The three captains responsible for ending their decades of dominion. Their decades of dominion. Many years. More than a decade. Probably 10. Not, not 10 years. Sorry. More than 20 years. Of reigning supreme. Of being Yonkos. Taken down by pirates of the worst generation the worst generation being luffy law and kid but you gotta remember there's a lot of worst generation members let's look it up one piece worst generation which is basically the worst generation uh were the upcoming upcoming pirates at the time so we have bonnie law luffy zoro hawkins I forgot the guy with the dinosaur thing. Why, I don't know why I always forget his name. Blackbeard, Apu, Kid, Capone, Uruk, and Killer. I'm trying to remember. What is the... No, no, no. I got to I, I got to remember. Basil Hawkins. I got to remember the last guy's name. I always forget. Oh, Drake. Drake. X-Drake. So... They got their bounties. It's three billion each. Monkey D. Luffy, Eustace Captain Kid, and Trafalgar Law are now worth three billion berry a piece. Belly, basically. And me personally, I don't like this. I don't like that they're all worth the same. Because at this point in the series, I, f I feel Luffy's the strongest out of the trio of the worst generation here with their uh, bounties. Uh, Law is definitely number two. I think Law and Luffy... Law... I, let's say Luffy's at 100%. I think Law is maybe at 85% compared to Luffy. Kid is the weakest. I think Kid is the weakest, even though Kid is one of my favorite characters. But Law is also one of... All three of these guys are, are, are some of my favorite... In the, easily the top five, especially after Wano. Uh, which, my top five... Let me do it right now. Is... Zoro used to be number one, but after Wano, Luffy, Zoro, Shanks. All right, this is going to be very important. The remaining two. I'll put Law, and then I'll put Kid. Kid used to be above Law, but after what I've seen, Law did, didn't want to yet. So that, that's my ranking right there. And my problem with the three billion belly each is that I feel like Luffy should have been higher. I think Luffy's bounty, I'm not going to say uh, 4 billion. How about Luffy 3.5 billion? Law, I say 3.2 let's say it's 3.2 billion and then kid could stay at 3 billion. It's still very impressive. They they have three they basically have Yonko bounties. All of them. All of them have Yonko level bounties. And I, I was seeing One Piece videos. I saw Brago talking about it, and I, I, he was like, "Dude, because he made a Yonko video before the the chapter came out, the spoilers and stuff." He said, "Do we really expect Law to be a Yonko with his crew, right? Because Law's crew is trash. <laughs> Kid's crew is not bad, but not the best. Uh, so it." It's good that later on they didn't really become Yonkos. Both of them. That, I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that, right? Which originally I thought that, I because Luffy was named a fifth Yonko, but he was not officially Yonko. And I was I was saying Law and Luffy were going to be the Yonko's name, but later on that was actually not the case. Which I'm going to talk about Yon the Yonkos uh, soon, but. We have in the capital, everything is free. So you, Luffy's over here eating yakisoba, takoyaki. Takoyaki is an octopus dish. Yakisoba, I believe, is a. I don't know if it's a. Uh, it's like a, okay, it's a noodle stir fried dish. Yakisoba, and then we got grilled squid, candy apples like him. So Luffy. Yamato and Chopper are just eating, having a ball. Chopper looks like he's eating can uh, cotton candy. Everybody looks so happy. And it's, it's really awesome. Now, 
I did not expect this, but when Robin was downstairs looking at this collection of Kokeshi dolls, which was made by the Tengu, we literally find out that the Tengu was actually Odin's father, Kosuki Sukiyaki, which is really interesting. And not only that, he said he ended up in prison there because by the time Odin left and everything and Orochi took over, it was too late. So he hid down there, right? And he said this, in prison, I thought you were a swordsmith. Who exactly are you? I took to smithing because I had talent for it, but it was always just a hobby. <sighs> Oda and his revelations and not only that, Odin's father, Sukiyaki, is like, I'm not going to tell Mom, uh, Momonosuke because there's no point, right? Because Momonosuke now is a, he is the shogun of Wano. Momonosuke basically has his own destiny to fill. So, you know, and he also feels ashamed for not being able to do anything. And he was going to commit seppuku, which is basically when a samurai feels like uh, they committed a great dishonor or something. They commit seppuku and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, don't take my word for that. And he just he just didn't. And the, then we got a big bombshell, which is Robin talking about the ancient weapon Pluton. So in this downstairs room, we actually get to see the poneglyph of Wano right under it. Robin reads it and says, OK, the ancient weapon Pluton it is it should be somewhere in this country. I actually no, Sorry, sorry, sorry. But there, there's a poneglyph down there. Sorry. But the poneglyph that said that was the one from Alabasta. And not only that, uh, so, uh, Odin's father, Sukiyaki, is like, yes, yes, it's here. The ancient weapon Pluton. So will the Straw Hats gain access to that weapon? Will they take the weapon if it's a small weapon? Or what would they do with it? Because there's obviously uh, ancient weapons, which I think they're weapons from the voice entry. Now, this is the big thing I did not notice when I first read this chapter. That's why it's good sometimes when I go on Twitter and people talk about the chapter. Is that the former prisoner mine Udon, it was dead. There was no no uh, vegetation or anything like that. There was no plants. There was no flowers. There was nothing like that. And then we just see it just flowers, mushrooms, trees, a lot of veg vegetation all around. Like it looks like a, a completely transformed place. And then I thought at first, I was like, is this the Pluton weapon doing this? And then I realized, no, there's like trees, flowers and stuff sprouting. And then I see a bunch of people just drained out of all their water, and like all their blood, blood is probably all the water taken out of their bodies and stuff. I'm like, what's happening? And then it turns out to be Green Bull. So Green Bull is here. He has king, he has queen treating them like father but we got to remember king and queen were not 100 percent when green bull went there like they were tired from that already you know uh queen got defeated by sanji and then king by Zoro, so they were not 100 percent but this is the thing the battle of the yonko oh yonko versus admirals the admirals are trash and all this stuff the admiral can't go to toe to toe with yonko that we, we got to end that first of all garp was a rear admiral and he went toe to toe with roger right a rear admiral he could have been an admiral but he just didn't want the paperwork so the admirals are i'm gonna say it, they're yonko level so we have green boy here and i never expected him to be a fanboy of akainu because he's like okay i want akainu's favor i want akainu to say attaboy like basically good job good job green Bull. you did something Greenville's revelation. So, first of all, back to what I was saying about the prison, Udon in Udon, the prisoner mine. Greenville's uh, devil fruit is awakened because every time he walks, uh, plants and stuff grow. So, he got an awakened devil fruit. Obviously, he's an admiral, so it makes sense. Not only that, he says this give it a rest already. At my rank, I lose face if I let a few commanders like you get the best of me. The Navy doesn't have manpower to waste on the mess you left less. Not that I expected much of you bozos. He literally tells King and Queen, the commanders of the of Kaido's crew, that he didn't expect much of them and calls them bozos. <laughs> this is crazy. 
he literally this means at 100 percent he still would have taken down king and queen together at the same time so yeah i i i'm saying this Ad, admirals are yonko level can they beat a yonko though debatable Deb yeah i think yes if they wanted to but not all of the yonkos i don't think they could beat all the yonkos but if they can't beat a yonko they will give the yonko a very good match because the thing is if that was the case kaido and big mom they would have taken care of them a long time ago but they were just like no nah, let, let's not touch the, these these monsters right maybe because they were not disrupting the the world as like i say it's disrupted right now right but not only that um we get this thing with green bull where he's just like okay he's sure to give me an attaboy if i bring him this rat's head talking about monkey d luffy and the fun one of the funniest twitter comments i saw was oh when green bull lands in wano and he attacks the straw hats they're gonna play uh football with his head that was the funniest thing but now I, I, looking how cool green bull is and how long we've been waiting for green bull to show up at wano which was years i believe since they were saying green bull is on his way to wano his devil fruit looks really cool. He has like these plant sucking things from his fingers. Like his, his fingers are all stretched out and stuff. And then he got, he has a tattoo on, like on, on a part of his body. It, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Uh, really good stuff. I don't know why Kid wanted to challenge Luffy, but I actually know I know why. Cause the new Yonkos got revealed and he's like, oh, I, I want to take you down. But Luffy's like, we don't, like we don't got time for, for this. Let's let's just have fun and stuff. Now the big bombshell was with the Yonkos. The new Yonkos. My boy Shanks, we already know. Black Bear, we already know. Luffy is like officially the Yonko now. So two of the worst generations are Yonkos. Teach and Luffy. And Buggy, the bombastic clown, Buggy. A lot of people are like, how did Buggy become a Yonko? A lot of people were referencing like a it was a one piece manga panel where yeah, it had Buggy, Luffy, Shanks, and Blackbeard. So they were like, Oda has been foreshadowing this for years. Now at first I'm like, how did Buggy become a Yonko? I, at first when I heard, uh, saw those spoilers, I'm like, there's no way. There, I was like, there's no way this dude became a Yonko. And then I realized somebody said that it's not about power; it's about how much disruption you could do to the war government. Buggy has a very strong crew, and over the time skip, he probably got even stronger members. And not only that, we gotta remember that uh, Whitebeard's supposed son, Weevil. It might have joined him as well. So Buggy's crew is stacked. It doesn't necessarily mean he has to be strong to be a Yonko, but man, this is some good stuff. It was Shanks, Buggy, a goat eating uh, trash or whatever, Blackbeard, and Luffy. Like, this is awesome. It, this is like some awesome stuff, and I cannot wait. After the one month break, which Oda definitely deserves, which I think Oda's gonna do a lot of research and stuff like that during that break. A lot of manga does take a long break and are don't even relax sometimes. They over here they do drafts and stuff, they do outlines of what they want to do next. And yeah, they say One Piece is entering the final saga, which I think the final saga a lot of people are like it's gonna be broken down into arcs, which I think I think so too, because we we need Elbath, we need the giant war, we and then I guess after the giant war we could get to uh uh Laugh Tale. I almost said Rap Tale. It, it's Laugh Tale, that's how you pronounce it. So overall this was a great chapter to finish. I mean Wano is almost finished. Like I think the next chapter, that's it. Uh which is probably the next month's chapter and stuff. And yeah, I'll give this chapter a perfect score of a ten.